Hey fam, Mark Kapitan. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your videos look a little bit more filmic looking. Give it a little punch, give it a little more character to your video. Just to give you a heads up, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and add film grain using just the Final Cut effects, but I'm also gonna show you how you can use this plugin, Dehancer Pro, to achieve a more filmic look. Dehancer Pro is not sponsoring this video, but I'm going to show you what you can achieve with more fine controls. And if it's something that you're interested in, you can check out my link down below. And if you end up ordering it, use code KAPATID, K-A-P-A-T-I-D, and you can get 10% off. With that out of the way, let's get filmic. All right, so we want our footage to look more filmic, you know, make it look a little more cinematic than your typical DSLR camera. So what we do is just go ahead and use what they call a plugin to help introduce some grain, but not just any ordinary grain, but an artistic grain. But first, let's look at this footage that we have in front of us. Just quick recap, if you're coming from my color correction video, we just wanna go ahead and dial in the exposure here, saturation, and even skin tone. But usually it'll look right where you want it after we just do the first two things. So I won't bore you with that, but we're just gonna go through this real quick. Great, I really like the way that looks. I mean, this is art, it's subjective. So for me, this is kind of like vlog type content where I just, you know, it's to my liking. We can add a color grade to this, give it a little bit more character. And then on top of that, we could even introduce some grain. Artistic grain though. We'll just take here, you can just type grain over in the effects down below and just drag it over to your clip. Okay, so let's go back here to the video inspector. There's iMovie grain and there's realistic grain. All right, let's take our scopes out of here. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Looks pretty decent, right? Got some film grain in there, looks more filmic. Normally in commercials, you want that kind of like clinical feel, like sterile, clean image, and it looks great. For me, I like aspire to it, but there are some other projects, even like personal projects, where you just want it to have a different feel. You want it to feel nostalgic. You want it to have some kind of warmth to it that goes beyond color, or at least goes in addition to color. And adding film grain in there can help with that. Again, artistic choice each of their own. So this is what it looks like for film grain, but let's see what it looks like with a different film grain look. So for Dehancer, I already color corrected and color graded my footage. But for this exercise, let me just turn off my color grade, which is here in color wheels two. Okay. And over here, you can see that we have a bunch of options here. I'm just gonna leave it set to rec 709, which is pretty much the already uh, puncher profile or standard profile that you have out of your camera if you didn't shoot in log. This particular footage was shot in S-Log3 on my A7S3 when I had it. As you can see, once I dropped in this effect, there was already a change in my color. And that's because of this film profile. And here, if I hit this drop arrow, you can see that we have a lot of film emulations that we can choose from. Like this is like legit film look. Like this old camera film look. For me, I have not shot film before other than the disposal camera. So I'm just gonna go through and pick different looks here. Oh, that looks nice. Kodak Portra 800. You know, I hear Fujifilm has nice colors. Okay, a little more on the green side, Vilvia 100. Again, I just chose what almost practically looks like a LUT uh, or preset. Let me just see what that looks like now and then compare it to the film grain for Final Cut Pro. So this is Dehancer Pro and then this is just the Final Cut. It almost looks like I barely have any grain and I'm already at 100%. Uh, and that's realistic grain. I'm gonna use iMovie grain. Uh, not, not in favor of that, no. All right, let's go back to Dehancer Pro. So let's see here. We have a push and pull here. All right, for me, I, I think I like that. You can obviously mess around here and change some things here. You can change the tones, the mid tones. It's almost so well, you can practically, oh, that's a lot of control there. Ooh, actually I like that. Okay, so after we choose a film emulation that we like, of course we can choose to enable it or disable it. So, so this is what the footage looks like without the emulation, but with film grain, if I just chose to leave it like this. For me, that's okay. Maybe a little bit too rough, but it's okay. If you want to be more artistic, you can just include what they have already for their film emulation. So I'm using Fujifilm Pro 400H. I think it looks much better. We can continue to manipulate other things in here. You can choose a little bit more of the colors here, like in the highlights. I like maybe just turn that, the highlights are a little bit yellow. So I'll bring that up 51% here, before and after, enable, disable. Very slight change, but as to the feels. All right, so as we continue to scroll down, here's film grain. We can actually change the size of it. You can make it more rough than you need it to be. That's just right. 1.0 is fine enough for me. And then of course, the amount, you can change it up there. Maybe make it look like it was like super 16 or 
or one of those old film formats. I'm just gonna keep it where it was at 20. Here we could also change how much film green we want in the shadows. Nice, nice control, the midtones as well, highlights. I'm gonna leave it as it is. I like it where it is. One of the other things that you can control here is halation and bloom, which are pretty similar, but not exact same thing. If you ever see other YouTubers or other creators, they use what they call like Cinebloom filters, or at least Moment calls them Cinebloom, or for Tiffin, I think it's a Black Pro Mist, where they just have a little bit of glow in the background. Like here in this light, it's a little bit more blooming rather than its normal view. If I didn't have a Cinebloom 10% filter on here, this glow would just be contained within the light bulb. You wouldn't just see much of a glow that it already has. And I'm gonna show you right here. So let's go here to the bloom, right? First we'll enable this. And oh, you see, you already see like a little bit of a difference there. If we hit mask mode, you can see where that blooming is. It's mostly in the highlights there. And as you can see, the highlights around my subject, which is my wife here. So you can see like right around here. Enable, uh, disable, enable. And of course you can have finer control with that. So you can make it glow more than usual. And that looks trippy. Yeah, we're, we're not, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, babe, we're, we're, we're not, we can't afford it. It's too bright, too bright. It's easier also to see it in mask mode if you can see, oh, where are my, what are my highlights doing? You can leave that alone. Details, you know, maybe you wanna go in there a little bit more with the highlights on the shoulder, so you can see here. Very subtle. Some of this stuff you won't really see. You, like, as you can see, if you're seeing this on our phone, you probably won't notice this. Amplify, right? Make this a little bit stronger. Wow, a little bit of glow, a little bit of glow. Might be a little bit too much. For halation, it's not the same thing as bloom, but it also occurs in the highlights. And usually it's some kind of like discoloration. It's kind of like going beyond what to the point it looks like discolored. Okay, so first let's enable this thing. I'll turn on mask mode so we can trace where it is. I don't know if you can see it on your screen, um, but here I have a red outline. It's hard to see, it's like right around here. So that's with it on, here's with it off, on, off. Probably can't see it on your small screen. It's probably not worth adding. And there's a lot here. Um, mostly I would like to use this when it comes to like direct lights, but I think the way that this footage already looks, looks great. For me, you don't really need to add halation. Maybe I would add it to like stronger lights, like dominant lights, like maybe something like this. But for me, this footage already looks great. Yeah, and of course there's more options down here. You can control vignetting, film breadth. But for me, I don't really play around with too much of this stuff, right? I just want nice subtle changes and at the same time, I don't wanna to spend too much time in the settings. Um, but right now this is a great look, I like this look. So that's halation. But as you can see, there's still a lot more settings in here that you can choose from. Film breathing, vignette, and all these other stuff. So you can feel free to check that out. But for me, I really like the way that this looks. Now if we just add some music, we're set. Okay, got this music from Artlist. Okay, all right, and here's how it looks. As you saw, Final Cut Pro doesn't give you much control with your film grain, and that's okay. But if you want to have a little bit more control, if you want more film emulations, definitely consider Dehancer Pro. Again, I'm not being paid to say this. For me, it's it's nice, it's, it's great to play around with. But for me, I like to keep things simple. I already like the profiles for film emulations that they have. Maybe just a little bit of tweaks here and there, depending on the kind of image that I drop down in the timeline. But other than that, it's nice to have that option and you can see that's really what you're paying for. It's definitely more extensive than the Final Cut version of Film Grain. I do like the ease of use and I do like how you can get much with just simple clicks. As you saw, I, don't, I didn't even manipulate that much. However, there's one thing that I wish they implemented, which is in their film dropdown, I just wish that instead of having a dropdown box here, unless you've gone through each and every one of these, I wish that you had some kind of preview box, like what they have here in the Final Cut Pro color. Like you can see that they have a generic background or maybe you can reference my footage that I have selected and you can see what happens to the image. Like here, colorize, you can see that it turns red, um, HDR tools, you know, 
I wish there was just a way for you to preview what each film simulation looks. Does it kind of look more blue? Does it kind of look more green? And I like to have that in a thumbnail style. When I'm not using Final Cut's color grading tools built in here, the color inspector, I would use Color Finale. I don't have it installed to this device, but when you open up Color Finale and you want to load in your own personal LUTs or you have LUTs that you downloaded, you have a thumbnail of the clip that is selected and you can see what each LUT is doing to your image so that you can appropriately choose which LUT you want to use. So in a similar way, I would like to have that here for uh, Dehancer Pro. At least I know that it's possible. Um, I don't know if this is their plan, but you know, Dehancer Pro, that'd be great. Especially if you're new to film, it just makes the ease of use even better. If you're interested in film emulations and you like a little bit more control in your how your image looks like, or if you just want that wide variety of film emulations just at all, consider checking out Dehancer Pro. Again, you can check out the link in the description. And if you decide to purchase anything, please use code CAPATID. Don't pay full price, get 10% off, you're welcome. And speaking of LUTs, if you wanna learn how to make LUTs for free and make them for yourself, you can go ahead and click this video right over here. I'm Mike, thanks again for watching. Now go out there and shoot for the life that matters. See ya.